well, this was really a review of the stuff we went over for aldehydes and ketones. In this case, the alpha-beta unsaturation really doesn't make any difference. This is a reaction, a normal category one reaction that we already learned about, where the organometallic attacks twice. So this is one of the rare nucleophiles that attacks the carbonyl carbon, even when we have an alpha-beta unsaturation. Okay. Oh, whoops. So again, I just want to point out why it's logical to call this a 1-2 addition, because the two atoms that were affected here are yeah, these two right here, and they're right next to each other. So that's not IUPAC nomenclature, obviously, to call them 1 and 2. It just indicates that they're right next to each other, the two atoms that are being affected. Mm -hmm. So yeah. This atom gained a carbon chain, and this one gained a hydrogen. This is the right way to write the organocuprates? I always forget. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. me. So you put the copper attached to the carbon chain, right? Not the lithium? Okay, you guys got it better than me. All right, so. Uh, let's actually put this over here, though. Well, let's go through the mechanism. Whoops. Let's go through the mechanism for this together. Any proposals about what might happen first here? Not what we just did. Oh, no, it's CULI. Um, okay. It's going to go to the beta carbon. Right. And then the alkene bond is going to move to that way, and the carbonyl bond is going to move up to the oxygen. The oxygen is going to get protonated into an alcohol. Okay, that sounds good. So we can keep going through that together, but it looks like you guys are comfortable with that. give us an intermediate that looks like this. And again, I'm putting in a lot of numbers here to make sure that I'm getting the connectivity right and not adding or dropping carbons. By the way, why was it reasonable for the number three carbon here to be an electrophile? Because of resonance. Yeah, there's a resonance structure where there's a positive charge. We're not going to bother drawing that resonance structure, but it's important to remind ourselves what that reason is. Uh, we would not want to attack the number four carbon because it doesn't have a resonance structure where it has a positive charge. But it takes us to here. Uh, what would be a logical next step? Steals the H from the hydronium ion. Now we, the hydronium can come in. We can protonate that. That would take us to here. Then what? Or are we done? We're done. What's the name for this type of molecule? Enolate. Close. Enol. Enol. Remember that the enolate is the, is the deprotonated charged form of an enol. We don't want to confuse enolates and enols. This is the neutral form, so it's an enol. Why is it called an enol? Because it's got the alkene and the alcohol. But what was the big thing that we learned about enols even at the end of last term? Um, they don't like to be like that, so they're in equilibrium with the ketone, or in this case, the aldehyde. That's so right. So it's going to go towards that. That's right. So we're not going to get too much credit if we leave this as our final product. Remember the lesson we saw? Pardon? 
Yeah, tautomerization. The lesson we saw last term is you generally don't want to leave an enol as your final product because there's going to be a lot more of the tautomer in the final product. We don't need to go through the mechanism for that because we covered that last time. Uh, usually you'll just be allowed to just say it tautomerizes. We saw that this could be acid or base catalyzed. I guess in this case it would be an acid catalyzed mechanism um, that would tautomerize this. So let's draw what this looks like after it tautomerizes. Or if you feel like it, you can go through the mechanism. That helps. Yeah, that was good. So this is your, your answer. Now, our answer should not be charged. I'm uh, just kidding, yeah. Remember that all we're going to do is take a proton from one atom and give the proton to a different atom. We're going to take the proton from this oxygen and we're going to give it to the alpha carbon. What happened to the proton? It got added to this alpha carbon over here. We might not draw it because it's a hidden hydrogen, but here this carbon only has one hydrogen and now this carbon has two hydrogens. So the proton has moved, excuse me, from here to here. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Make sure you haven't added or dropped carbons. So this would be our final answer at this point. Here we just end up with this aldehyde. Let's compare this to our initial product over here. Basically what's happened here is the right-hand side of this molecule ultimately was not affected. It was just the 3 and the 4 that got affected here, ultimately, because of this tautomerization step. But let's, uh, even though this is really what happens here, there's kind of a shortcut that's oftentimes acceptable when you're drawing mechanisms. An acceptable shortcut Uh, by the way, before I forget, this mechanism probably isn't, uh, strictly speaking, totally correct. I think uh, no one knows exactly how organocuprates attack, but I think it's, uh, it's reasonable to imagine that they're taking the electrons out of this bond and attacking the number three um, as a, a normal nucleophilic attack, even though this is probably not 100% correct, but it's good enough for us to think about what's happening. And of course, remember, we know that for organocuprates, even though there's two carbon chains, only one of the carbon chains will attack. We're only going to use one of the carbon chains to attack. The other one is just a technicality. Now, coming back to here. Okay. Here's what might be a slightly better way to draw the attack. Instead of showing the electrons getting pushed all the way onto the oxygen, let's just get them, show them being pushed onto the alpha carbon here. structures, you put the negative charge here, and I said that was not significant because there was no reason in that case to move the electrons towards the number four carbon. However, in this case, we do have a reason to, to move them here because they're getting pushed by the nucleophile. So that's the difference between this and earlier. Earlier, we were just drawing a resonance structure that had nothing to do with the nucleophile. If there's no nucleophile coming in, there's no reason for the, these electrons to move towards the number four carbon because the number four is no more electrophilic than the number three. However, if there's a nucleophile coming in, pushing the electrons off of the number three, then there is a good reason to push them onto the number four over here. Now we just do the And now we can just protonate this number four over here. Now, after all, remember, whether you draw this picture or this picture is totally immaterial because these are resonance structures of each other. As we've talked about, there can be multiple legitimate ways to draw a mechanism because there's going to be multiple resonance structures. 
As long as you get something that's a resonance structure of something else, it doesn't matter which one you draw. So it doesn't matter whether you draw it this way or this way. These are really the same exact thing. Remember that things that are resonance structures of each other are considered to be the same molecule. However, this picture is more convenient. Why is this picture more convenient? Because this picture makes it seem like ultimately we're going to be protonating the oxygen. But really what we're ultimately protonating is the number four carbon over here. So this is a more convenient way to draw the mechanism, uh, to, or more convenient resonance structure to draw. 